What's up guys, Intellitech Mobile here, and today we'll be doing the full review on the Samsung Galaxy A10e. One of the cheapest Samsung phones that you can find, and out of all of the budget Samsung phones that you can find, I would wager that this is one of, if not the most common one that you'll see out in the wild. And that's for good reason. Yes, there is the Galaxy A01, but for the most part, this will be the most common phone that you'll see as the gateway into the Galaxy ecosystem. It was released a few years ago, and the interesting thing is that there's even some versions of it that can run up to Android 11. But my version that's unlocked from Metro is still stuck on Android 9 Pie, which is weird. But for whatever reason, there technically is a version of this that still actually got a few years worth of software updates almost like it's a flagship and the reason why i'm starting the review off with that is because that will be a little bit of a difference as far as determining whether or not it may be worth it because there are some people that want to have a more up-to-date version of android and if you can find a version that is in fact updatable to android 11 then that may be a selling point even when you compare it to older flagships that you might be able to find for a similar price, which generally is the way that I recommend people go. But if this is the right price, it may be a good buy. But that's with a very heavy asterisk. But before we get to that, let's get into the overall review of this after I've been using it with my secondary phone number for the last few weeks. So I used this phone on Q-Link Wireless and well, it supports 4G LTE, as you'd expect. No 5G in a phone that's this cheap, but what do you expect? We also have a plastic back with plastic sides. It basically has a very similar design to a lot of other cheap budget phones. It's just a plastic shell. They slap the buttons in and just sort of slap the motherboard in and slap a screen on top. Very similar to what you'd expect from just about anything else. And I kicked the tripod. So that's what you'd expect for the price. There isn't really much to complain about. Even though it is plastic, the build quality of this is fairly okay. Now, it is a bit flexible. You can see mine is a little bit bent. So, because if you put pressure on it, not obviously from doing that, but from sitting on it or just otherwise it sort of flexing from day to day use as you toss it on a table, then sure, it can bend a little bit, but other than that, it's not too bad as far as the build quality goes. This particular phone, before I got ownership of it, it had taken a couple tumbles on the top corners, and the plastic has done a fairly decent job at absorbing the impact, absorbing the gouge, and not passing it off to the screen. Although, the thing with these Galaxy cheapy phones, like the A10e and the A20, is that this plastic does a very good job at absorbing impact when it's a very short drop, but if you drop it on a corner from a very tall height, the plastic is thin enough to where that shot can actually go through the plastic into the glass and crack it. This Gorilla Glass is a very old version of Gorilla Glass, and it's not very scratch or shatter resistant, especially shatter resistant. Scratch resistant is what you'd expect for the price range and cases and screen protectors are ubiquitous for these phones, so it is easy to keep it protected. In fact, my particular one come, came with this case, which has a cutout for an extra camera for a camera that this unit does not have. But the case slaps in, and it's just fine. Now, I never use cases with these stupid little things to get out of them, but if you like it, that's there. And whoever buys this is going to get this case, so hopefully they like it. So yeah, uh, it's not like finding accessories for this are necessarily difficult because the nice thing about Samsung's cheap phones is that because everybody has them, finding accessories is still perfectly acceptable as far as the easeability of it. You're probably not going to find anything from big brands, but you'll find plenty of cases to get you by, and it's not like a phone that's this, ex this expensive is super mission critical by keeping it protected compared to a much more expensive phone anyways. And because this screen is an LCD, you're not going to have the OLED issues of this breaking after a tough impact. Generally speaking, the glass on the front is easy to crack, but the display on the inside will likely keep working even after a really bad fall. So there is definitely something to be said about that. And of course, this does have face unlock, so if you do lock this, you can press the power button and open it up with your face, if your face is properly pointed at it. but. Yeah. In my case, it's it's not really working too well, but that's probably just because I just shaved, so it probably doesn't recognize me. But 
when you haven't shaved recently and you're wearing roughly the same facial outfit that you were wearing when you set it up, then the face unlock actually works pretty well. It's not amazing, but it certainly gets the job done. It'd be nice to have a fingerprint sensor, but you don't expect that for the price. You've got the face unlock and you've got the pin as a fallback option. And of course, pattern, whatever it is you use. So biometrics are what you'd expect for this price. Also, some other things that you'd expect for this price that are actually advantages for a budget phone like this. You've got a headphone jack and you have SD card expansion, which is important because the 32 gigabytes of storage on this is definitely not enough in today's day and age. And the actual speaker quality on this is a bit iffy. It certainly will get you by, but I personally find more issue with the screen than I find issue with the speakers. As someone who's been always used to Samsung Note phones, this LCD screen at its very sub 720p resolution is just a little bit too much for my picky tastes. And coming from a Note and dual wielding a Note in the same pocket as this phone, it gets to be a little iffy. And by iffy, I mean painful, because I just don't like this screen. But again, for this price, can I realistically complain? No. But what I can mention is the fact that there are phones that you can find with much, much better screens in a very similar price point to this, to this phone. And I'll get to that in a sec. But for now, we're going to play a video just to get a sort of idea about the sound quality. So we'll play After one. So we'll play a video from one of my most recent tech YouTubers that I recently have been watching, Steve Alicious. So we'll go ahead and give a little audio and video sample for this. I hope he doesn't mind. Of the S23 Ultra, which we gone ahead and gotten rid of the Exynos version of the S line of devices. According to all the benchmarks that have been released, there is no Exynos version. If you notice, there is only a single bottom firing speaker. So, yeah, there's a lot as far as what you'd expect for a budget phone. But to be fair, if you're coming to this from an old Samsung Note, then you might be used to a lot of this stuff. Like, you know, what else has an SD card slot, 32 gigabytes of storage, a sub quad HD screen, and a headphone jack? Well, my favorite Note 3. And in fact, you can find both of these for nearly the exact same price. And objectively speaking, the A10e is a better phone. But there's other options that you can find out there because this phone, you can buy this brand new for about $80 to $100, depending on where you get it from. Do not spend a single penny over $80, over $80 for this phone. You got ripped off. If you did, it's not worth it. Unless it's brand new, sealed in the box, and 100% unlocked, and you just want something that's brand new, then sure. Because, like I mentioned, the software fundamentals are there. It definitely has the specifications necessary to be an acceptable budget phone for someone who just use, uses their phone for basic stuff. Text messages, phone calls, Facebook, YouTube, the occasional game of Angry Birds or Flappy Flappy Temple or whatever or whatever, you know, Subway uh, Subway, Call of Duty, whatever it's called, all these different mobile games that people play that aren't too taxing, yeah, those will work just fine on the A10e, and there really isn't much to complain about in those cases, but again, it's not a matter of is this able to do what you would want an $80 phone to do, but it's the question of what other phones can you find for $80 that can do more than this can do. So I'm trying to find these specifications in here because I forgot the actual amount of RAM that this has off the top of my head. But I believe it's only 2 or 3 gig gigabytes, but I will look at it right now. Because I made the mistake of not looking that up beforehand. So, yeah, so and we can see that the memory on this is a little squirrely because we only have 2 gigabytes of RAM. Which, here's the thing. Again, for basic stuff, for if you're not multitasking, this is just fine. But... This kind of does bring into the question, if you are tech savvy, you can get even an older Samsung flagship that has better specs than this for a similar price. Because this phone, again, brand new is $100, but you want to know what phone you can find in many cases for $100? If you look in the right place, 
this a samsung galaxy note 8 which sure is not the newest note but this thing curb stomps the a10e like it's no contest no one in their right mind is going to pick the a10e over the note 8 like come on and even if you have to spend a couple extra bucks for a note 8 again i i bought a note 8 recently a blue one c stock so it had a couple blemishes but it was overall in passable condition for 110 dollars this a10e is trash compared to that for that deal so again the a10e if you can find this for 60 bucks or less then maybe maybe go for it but if you're paying a penny over that, it has to be brand new, sealed in the box. Again, not because this isn't worth 60 bucks in terms of what you get for it. It's a great phone for that price. But it's a matter of what else can you find for that price. So if you're willing to spend a little bit of time searching to get something that you'll be happy with, then you can find a lot of good deals for the same price, if you saw my video on the smaller Google Pixel 3, which is much closer to the size of the A10e anyways, you can get a Pixel 3 for 60 bucks. At least you could back when I did my video six months ago. So you can get a Pixel 3 for 60 bucks, the same price as this. And again, the Pixel 3 curb stomps the A10e, even if you have to get one that has a few scratches on it. So, but I think what most people are going to be concerned about is... I smash my phone, I need to go to my local Walmart, I have Straight Talk, I have Simple Mobile, I have whatever it is that I have, that's an NVMO, MVNO, and I need to be able to just walk into the store, buy a brand new phone that I know is going to work, and just use it. If you're in that situation, then assuming your carrier still offers the A10e for less than $100, specifically less than $100, then go for it. Because if you want that security of having a new device, if your carrier specifically allows this to be updatable to Android 11, which is a big deterrent, because Android 9 does not have that much life left in it if you want to consistently be able to use all your apps, like banking and stuff like that, then as long as you have that consideration met and you slap the tripod violently in an attempt to move your hand across to grab your water then <laughs> scratch that last part then in that specific scenario you can certainly do worse than the a10e so i know this review might seem short and relatively succinct for what you would expect from intellitech mobile i'm usually known to be quite the chatterbox but what else is there to say the screen is passable the face unlock works the headphone jack is a great feature there's no fast charging, but this battery is so small that you don't need it. The battery life is really good because the specs don't demand much from this battery. You've got an SD card slot. You've got the buttons. Sure, they're on the wrong side, uh, or I should say they're they're all on the same side, which is crap. But if you're used to something like the Note 20, then you're used to that. Or like I mentioned, the Pixel 3 that I mentioned, you know, that also has the side buttons. So, again, that's not really something to really complain too much about the camera is eh, it's a camera i mean like i mentioned if you if you snag a pixel 3 or a note 8 especially that pixel 3 oh, do i even need to say anything it's a slaughter fest this camera is just you know junk compared to that but you know for emergencies for if you need to get a picture for something the zoom on this is not going to be good. It's a single lens. But, again, you've got the same double tap, the power button, to get to the camera. And the camera is certainly passable. Is it good? No. It's not good. But it is passable. So, we can take a picture of the Note 8 right here. Tap to focus. Snap it. I guess there is a 2x, but it's just, it's just a crop. It's not anything like that. And we can see right there. The result. No, I don't want location information to be shown. My cat is meowing for some reason. Boots! Boots! Why are you yelling? Anyways. 
So, there's a good old picture of the Note 8. Of course, black objects like this are a little hard to photograph. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's, there's a camera. It takes pictures. So, yeah. That's the Galaxy A10e. And that's pretty much the one scenario where I recommend it, is if you absolutely need a brand new phone direct from your carrier, and you have no other options, you need to buy something from Walmart today because you're going to get a special call from your the job interview or from your business or from your grandmother or whatever the case may be. So, in that scenario, you can do worse. I would definitely pick this over a lot of the other no-name phones just because it's Samsung, so at least you know it's consistently decent. But other than that, for my usage, for the way that I personally shop for a phone, I would never buy the A10e. And I wouldn't buy it. I was given this from my sister-in-law as a little uh, sort of a gift after she destroyed my S7 Edge. So uh, that is that. So anyways... That's pretty much what I think about the A10e. Let me know your thoughts on the A10e. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you feel like I left out something? Do you feel like there's something that I glossed over that's really important? And if so, let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Let me know your thoughts on the Galaxy A10e or any of the other phones that you've seen in this video in the comments. I always want to say description, but no, the comments down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you all have a good one. Peace. And just for fun, here's all the Samsung phones I have on my desk. A10e. Note 8. Note 5. Another Note 5. Note 4. That you can't even see. S3. Missing the back. Note 7. Note Fan Edition, Note 3, okay, I'm missing some, Note 2, S6 Edge Plus, Note 9, and is that it? Oh yeah, and just for fun, Gear S2, Nokia whatever this is. So, oh yeah, S5, S4, S6. So if you want to see a review on any of these phones that I just flopped over, oh yeah, oh, and, and there's more. Galaxy Express 3. Another S3. Galaxy Mega. LG Zone 3 and LG Eclipse 3, I think this was called. I'm not sure. Stay. Stay. Okay. So if you want to see a review on any of these phones that I just randomly flopped onto this desk, then be sure to subscribe to IntelliTech Mobile, click the bell, and drop whatever one of these phones you saw that you want to see reviewed in the comments below, and I will happily do a review once I get to testing it. So, this is IntelliTech Mobile. Here's to 2023. This will be the year that we hit 1,000 subscribers, get monetized, and start doing more videos on this channel. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I found it helpful, and I hope you all have a good one. Peace!